Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing Plus and Minus Episode 9 peeps of the Taiwanese BL drama series. This episode was difficult, because it's going to lead to Episode 10. In this episode, Jing finds out from his father that his mother is dying. Now, Zing's mother left when he was a very young child, left him, his sister, and his dad, and just went away. Didn't have anything to do with them until now as she's dying. And this makes Jing very upset and disturbed. Now, not entirely she didn't have anything to do with him, because she tried to set him up on these blind dates with... Um, his dad tried to set him up on these blind dates with someone that he was like uh, his mother knew somehow. And so I guess she did have a little bit of contact with Jing's dad, but that's kind of it. And Jing doesn't really know how to deal with the fact that his mom is dying. And also, at the same time, simultaneously, Jing's dad finds out that Jing is dating Fu Ligong. Now, it's not that Jing was trying to hide his relationship with Fu Ligong from his father. That's not what happened at all. It's kind of different in this case where they had just started dating, so they really hadn't had much of a chance to go and talk with Jing's dad about him, Jing dating Fu Ligong. But Jing and Fu Ligong go to a movie theater to kind of have a nice little date out watching a movie off the sitcom, or the not the sitcom, the series that they were watching at home. And when they come back from the movie, their um, Jing is holding Fu Ligong's hand, and he says, "You know, you were very hesitant, and you waited quite a while to hold my hand since you've liked me for years." And Fu Ligong's like, "Well, we're in." public. I don't want to draw too much attention. And so Xing grabs him really close at this time and he's like, well, you don't want attention. I'm just going to really make us have some attention. And it's at that point that Xing's dad and sister see Xing with Huli Gong. Now his sister, I don't think she's really that shocked because I think she's known for a while that Fu liked Xing and Xing just didn't realize it. But Xing's dad is very upset and I really get kind of annoyed by parents like this because they're like we want you to have a family and a nice life and I'm like what makes it so they can't have a family and a nice life I mean it's 2022 peeps it's not you know 1901 and even if it were there's nothing to say they couldn't have a nice life so I'm just saying I think it's kind of zany and honest opinion so anyway, Fu's, or not Fu's, Jing's dad is disturbed by the fact that Jing is dating Fu Ligong, not because he has anything against Fu Ligong. I think he likes Fu Ligong as a person, but he's like, if Jing ends up with Fu Ligong, then what about my grandkids and what about my happy life? Now, I do have to say, I don't really see Jing really caring whether or not he has kids. I don't see that being a huge consideration for him simply because I think he would be worried about being a parent given the fact that his mom left him and that kind of has traumatized him quite a bit in his life. Now Fu Ligong, I see him wanting kids being happy with kids and eventually Jing would be okay with that. So anyway, we don't know. We haven't had a sequel yet so no idea yet. But at this point Jing's dad's like, what about you having a happy life? What about you having basically a cookie cutter life like everyone else, like your mother would have wanted you to have, and she's dying now. You know, you really need to think about this. And in the middle of all this contortion, as it were, is Fu Ligong. And I think, you know, by the end of this episode, and especially in episode 10, people were really mad at Fu Ligong in the comments on like Vicky Rukatan, for example, or YouTube. They were like, Fu Ligong is going to dump Jing, and that is so wrong of him, it's so unkind, he really, really needs to apologize. And I'm going, Fu Ligong is doing exactly what any thoughtful humanoid who would think this through to the nth degree would do. Not because he doesn't care for Jing, but because he does, and he doesn't want Jing to be inconvenienced in any way. I think that 
for those of us who overthink things to the nth degree, dating is extremely problematic because we're constantly thinking about the best for that other person and we want to protect them from harm. And in so doing, we overthink things and we try to figure out everything that could possibly go wrong and you can't ever do that. So it's kind of one of those catch-22 things where you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. And in this case, Fruity Gong is there for you. And I think that this episode really showed how thoughtful Fruity Gong was. Because like when, when Jing was sitting there on the couch, completely like cuddling up his pillow and stressed because his mom is dying and he doesn't want to do the wrong thing as her son, but he really doesn't know what the right thing as her son is to do since she walked out of his life and had nothing to do with him. And he's like, I don't want to make my dad mad. And I don't want to make my, you know, my mom wasn't there for me. So what do I do? And I love what Fu Li Gong does because he just comes up and he sits on the floor beside Jing in this one scene as Jing's on the couch holding the pillow. And then he kind of sets up just a little bit from the floor and he takes the pillow out of Jing's clutches and then he grabs Jing's hands and puts them around his waist and he says, I'm always going to be here for you. And the thing I think you need to realize, Jing, is even if people are madder than hell at one another, basically, I mean, who doesn't say this, I do because of where I came from, they will still at the very end, if they love each other, that will dissipate. They won't be thinking of all the anger they had toward each other. They will instead be thinking of the fact that I love this person. That's what they'll remember at the very end of everything. Even if they spent their years apart, even if they were mad, mad, mad at one another, they're not going to remember that. They're going to remember the fact that they love this person. And then he says, you know, I'm always going to be there for you. I'm always going to be here for you. And I think, in a way, the reason that Fru Li Gong does what he does in episode 10, which is coming up, is because of what he says in this one scene. Because he says, I'm always going to be there for you. And what I think happens for Fru Li Gong, and again, this is just on his opinion watching the drama series several times, but anyway, is he's sitting there going, the best way for me to be there for Jing is to make sure Jing can keep his dad happy and his his relationship with his dad and his sister because they are his family. And if that means I can't be his person, then I'm going to bear the brunt of that. I'm going to be the one who isn't in his life romantically so that he can be having that relationship with his family because family is extremely important and you know i think that it reminds me of tutor and fighter in what are you which i thought was a really dreadful series and very poorly made no offense to anyone who likes that series but Tudor and Fighter, the one thing that I did like about that series is they were a great couple. If something came up, they were Johnny on the spot for one another, which you never see in couples in real life. Usually it's like something bad happens and one person will be there for the other, but when something bad happens to the other person, the other person is probably not going to be there for them in the same way that they were there for it. Not to be bad, it's like usually one person is more active in the relationship than the other which is i think very unbalanced but you know whatever works for people but with tutor and fighter when tutor broke up with fighter it wasn't because he hated fighter it was simply because he said there when i can't cost fighter his dad i can't cost fighter his chance at what people call a perfect life because fighter likes me ergo I will bear the brunt of this. I will let Fighter be mad at me, and that way he can have a good life. But the thing that I think they aren't factoring in is that other person's good life might not be a good life if, for example, Tudor wasn't in Fighter's life. Because I think for Fighter, Tudor really helped him have bring out the better qualities in him. I mean, Tudor, he had a very good sense of this is right, 
this is wrong. And I think that moral compunction, if you will, really helped Fire be a better person too. Because I think as a couple, they were a very strong couple in the fact that they both had each other's backs, but they also both really worked at the relationship and worked to make the world a better place together rather than apart. In the same way, I think with Jing and with Fu Li Gong, those two as a couple are better because number one, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. They know what makes each one of them tick. They've, li they've lived around one another for about 30 years. They're not going, I mean, I'm sure there could be surprises that pop up along the way, but for the most part, they're going to know where they stand with one another. Whereas if Fu ended up with someone else who he had met like on a blind date, regardless of whether that was a guy or a girl, I'm not talking about gender here, I'm just talking about in general, that person isn't going to know how Fu thinks, how Fu acts, how Fu relates to things like someone like Jing would know. And in the same way, Fu is going to know far more about Jing. Like if Jing is clutching his pillow, he's going to know Jing needs me to sit here with him. Jing needs me to let him put his arms around me and know I'm going to be here for him. That's what Jing needs right now. Whereas someone else might sit there and go, I don't know how to relate to this person. I don't know what they need. I don't know what to do. And that understanding cannot be overweighted, I don't think. It's kind of like in the same way why I think Bad Buddy was such a good show. I think it's kind of interesting that Bad Buddy came out in Thailand around the same time, I mean, six months before, Plus and Minus came out in Taiwan. I think it's kind of interesting in a way because both are about people who grew up together. Now, in the one case, they were enemies, quote, quote, but not really. And in the other case, they've been friends their whole life. But I think that that understanding is an interesting component in the relationships, both in Bad Buddy and in the case of Plus and Minus, where you have people who really, really get each other. And I'm not saying like you can't have people that really, really get each other who didn't know each other their whole life. Because I've met some people that it's like, you meet them, you talk to them, and it's like, I get them. We're on the same page. This makes sense. Not that they can't surprise you, but they're very straightforward. They don't really pull any punches and you have a good camaraderie with them even though you don't know them for a very long time. But I will say that with Fu Li Gong, I think that as he's trying to synthesize Jing's mother's death, he's sitting there going, we have so much going on right now. We have the fact that we're just starting a relationship, both Zing and Fu, Neither one have really dated. I mean, no offense, I don't really call their blind date fiascos really good examples or experience with dating. I, I don't mean that bad at all. It's just that really doesn't count much. So they're really just starting out, figuring out a relationship. And Fu's got to deal with the fact that Jing's family might not be open to Jing being with him. And what's that going to mean? And he's also got to deal with the fact that Jing's losing his mom and that's causing him emotional turmoil. So you have at least three things going on at the same time and Fu's like, what can I do to make this better? And Fu, I think, does a very human thing where he goes, you know what, I'm just going to try to, in episode 10, which is coming up, I'm going to take myself out of the equation and that will make things better for everyone. Which doesn't always work. I mean, you know, you think that sometimes taking yourself out of a situation will make it better, but honestly, it may or may not. And in this case, I think it definitely didn't. But I don't think it's something that, you know, people got really agitated at Fu in this series. And they were like, Fu needs to massively apologize. Fu is such a terrible person for doing this decision at this time. I'm going, Fu did exactly what most people would do if they were uber considerate of another human being and they thought that that human being was not only going to use, lose their mom who had just passed away but also lose their dad because he couldn't accept the fact that Jing was in a same-sex couple relationship. So I don't blame 
through it all for what's coming up next. I think it's very sad because Jing doesn't stop to ask questions. I mean, I think the one thing that I think would have made this series a little better is Jing is not the sharpest tool in the shed. I don't mean that bad about Jing at all. I mean, he has some very likable qualities, and I think he was the perfect person for Fu, and Fu was the perfect person for Jing, because they really balanced out their strengths and weaknesses. But when the next episode comes up, Jing doesn't ask questions. And I think that in situations when it comes to relationships, when it comes to possibly leaving a person for good and not coming back, we really need to take time and sit there and go, why is this person doing this? Is there a reason that they are leaving? There must be some kind of reason. Sometimes it's a good reason. Sometimes it's a bad reason. But usually there is always a reason for behavior. And I think that Jing knew Fu. So he had to sit there and go, Fu isn't being honest with me, but what, what is going on here? But I think the other catalyst, which I'm bringing the wagon back, but there is a scene in episode nine where Jing says, you know, I just need some time by myself. That scene, I think, is another reason why Fu did what he did, because he felt like Jing was kind of cutting him off emotionally from the trauma that Jing was trying to deal with. And I don't think that Jing was trying to do something bad, but Fu was saying they're going, if Jing can't share with me his trauma that he's dealing with with his mom, then how are we going to have a feasible relationship if he comes into big problems with his dad? And what if we have other problems that come up that just naturally occur in relationships as time progresses? How are we going to fight those issues if we can't face them together? And you know, I think that's a very, if people tend to isolate themselves with trauma, I think that it's understandable. It's not even wrong. Because I know, like, for me personally, sometimes I need some downtime. And when I used to live with Bob, she always knew it was like, Gigi's or Anna's not mad. Anna just needs a little time to decompress. And then she will come out and watch The Big Bang Theory, like, I didn't think so. But she needs a little bit of time just to take for herself. And that's okay. But I think that you have to have a relationship with people where they know that you're not isolating yourself from them. You just need a little time to decompress and process, and then you will be out and about and all that, which Fu didn't quite get with Xing. And Xing really, I think he tried to, you know, close that breach up when he came back home that night to Fu's place, and he said, you know, basically, um, I don't remember if he apologized, but basically, you know, I'm sorry I did that. And Fu was like, I really didn't know how to reach you when you said you needed time by yourself. I thought maybe, you know, you were cutting yourself off from me. And I think that also played a part in what happens with Fu in this next episode. And that is my review of episode nine of Plus and Minus. Check it at the round table. Bye. Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing how you can connect with us on social media and also how you can support us. We are reachable at this lovely podcast on various platforms. We also have several YouTube channels, The Hand Network, Check It Round Table, and also the Asian Drama Club. I will drop the links in the description so you can check those out. You can also reach us online at our website. That's onacar.com. That's O-N-N-A-C-A-R-R.com. You can support us through either PayPal or Venmo. Our PayPal email address is roses, R-O-S-E-S, out of the snow, O-U-T-O-F, S-N-O-W at gmail.com. And you can support us also on Venmo. The 
the connection for that is at on a car and that's uppercase o and uppercase c and it's o n n a c a r r the last four to verify are one one four three thank you so much for listening talk to you soon bye Thank you.